So for today, I want to discuss how to buy properties through a limited company. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Deborah, and welcome to my channel, Time with Deb. For those of you who are here for the first time, thank you. And those of you that are returning, thank you. And um, please don't forget to hit the button as you watch. Buying properties through a limited company is a growing trend right now. Um, I believe over a quarter of properties, of rental properties, are now purchased through limited companies. So how exactly does one buy through a limited company? Well, the first thing you need to do is open a limited company, but not just any limited company. It needs to be an SPV, which is known as special purpose vehicle. That's a type of limited company you need to open. And you'll be given a code once you open, um, once you set up a company, you can do so yourself or get an accountant to open one for you. It's very simple. Um, for those of you who may already have a limited company and you think, well, why can't I just, um, you know, apply for a mortgage with my current limited company? Well, lenders prefer not to do, <laughs> not to do so. So lenders actually prefer for you to open a brand new company for the purpose of buying a property. So you let's say you already have a limited company, whatever business you have, that's a limited company. Forget about it. Okay. For the purpose of buying a house, you know, especially one that's to buy, um, you know, one to buy for the purpose of renting it, it is better to, you know, to open a brand new limited company. And the reason why lenders prefer this is because it's a lot more straightforward for them. It's, you know, it's a lot easier. They know why you set it up. And they know that this company solely deals with buying and letting properties. Hence why they prefer it. it you know, it's just what it is. So, of course, one of the um, one of the main reasons why people are now purchasing properties through a limited company is because of the corporation tax. It's currently set at 19%, which is a lot better than, you know, paying tax as an individual. But anyway, I don't want to go too much into the pros and cons. Um, for now, I just want to focus solely on how to go about it and the step by steps on, you know, setting up a company and purchasing one, purchasing a property through such company. I can do a separate video discussing the pros and cons to doing so, if you wish. So one of the things the banks or the lenders will look for is something called the SIC code, S-I-C code. And they also don't care about, you know, previous history of um of the of the company really they just want to see that all the company has been doing is let buying and letting properties so in the case where you may you may already have a limited company open you can perhaps uh, speak to an accountant and change that over so you can turn it into a, um, a special purpose vehicle um, company but yeah they need to see the sit code and to make sure that you know the company once again it's set up for the purpose of buying and letting there is a sick list on um gov.co.uk i'll leave the link in the description below i'll also leave the uh, link of um company house on how to set up your limited company your spv limited company so yeah i also want to point out it does not mean that if you already have a limited company that's trading in, in other things whether you're selling shoes selling clothes whatever you know your business is trading in it doesn't mean you can't get a mortgage for buy to let it just makes it more difficult and it sort of limits your options. So for example, if you have a limited company set up for the pure purpose of buying to let, let's say you have the option of 50 lenders, um, in comparison to if you then try to, you know, get a mortgage um, through, you know, using your current limited business, which has already been trading in something else, you might then be limited to, let's say 20 or even less um, lenders. So it's just much easier to just set up a brand new company with no trading history, unless the trading history is in properties. So once you've set up the limited company, um, it should all be confirmed, you know, usually the same day, but due to the current state of things, it could take a little bit longer. So anyway, that's done. You can literally ap apply for a mortgage as soon as your limited company is set up. It's that simple. So you have your SIT code, and you're ready to go. You can start approaching lenders or preferably speak to a broker, whichever you're you know, comfortable with. Um, so at the moment, the maximum mortgage rate one is able to attain for a buy to let is a 75% loan to value rate. So yeah, you know, the market is a bit, you know, it's not at its best shape right now, 
but um during good times you're probably able to get up to 80 with a maximum of 85 percent loan to value rate but at the moment it currently stands at about 75 percent if you are lucky while setting up the business what you, you what you would do is list yourself as the director so if it's let's say you and a partner or you and a friend or you and someone else you can both be directors with 50 uh, 50 percent share or if it's just you then you have 100 percent share but make sure you seek advice uh, from someone who is qualified and experienced okay if you are unsure of anything so yeah so you list yourself as a director and what would happen is when you are applying for the mortgage for the buy to let uh, mortgage um they will require some details from the directors of the company okay so this is almost like um in comparison to a guarantor in in a, in, a, in a way that's what i would compare it to so yeah they will take down your details but the property will be in the name of the company okay so for example if i was to open up a company called time with deb um time with deb limited or time with Deb Holdings, Time with Deb Properties, whatever I want to name it. Um, so once it's approved and the company set up, then I can go and apply for a mortgage from you know some of the lenders that are available to me, and I would have to put my my details down as well as Deborah, as the person that I am. I would have to put my details down as a director of the of the company. So the whole concept behind um, buying through a limited company is because. In the eyes of the law, a limited company is regarded as a legal entity. It's its own legal entity, which means effectively it's its own person. The company is its own person. OK, so um, it's different from your personal assets or things that you have under your personal name as an individual. So um, it's definitely a good way of acquiring of acquiring um, multiple properties, especially for the purpose of buy to let. It just makes more sense. You're saving a, a lot more in the, in the long run. And it's just less complex than buying multiple buy-to-let properties under your own name. The steps are very simple. Choose a name. Check that it's available because a lot of the names, you'd be surprised, are not available. Just because there are thousands of um, limited companies um, out there. So you might think you have a, a clever name or a name that's quite unique. You'd be surprised that it's gone so once you're thinking of names or trying to decide a name for your limited company make sure you have several options just so that you're not surprised or shocked by the time you go on to register and you find out that the name is no longer available so bear that in mind so you you register sign up make sure you get your sick code and make sure you are registering for a special purpose vehicle limited company so spv company and you have your sick code okay because the lenders will be looking for your sick code whilst you're you know once you go on to um apply for a mortgage so yeah set it up it's ready get a broker or go out there and approach a lenders yourself and you apply for a mortgage if you're lucky get 75 percent loan to value rate and the banks take it from there they will decide whether or not you know uh, you meet the requirements and they want to go ahead and confirm your mortgage and they will do the normal procedures such as um valuation then you know things of that nature as you know as any mortgage uh, lenders would so yeah, it's it's that simple. Um, I don't want to make this video too long and I don't really have much time today, but um, I can do another video just discussing and highlighting the pros and cons to buying properties through a limited company. So one of the pros I touched on you know, earlier was obviously the corporation tax being set at 19%, whereas as individuals, your, um, you know, your profit tax could be 20 or even up to 40%. You know, so yeah, the corporation tax is a big benefit to buying through a limited company. But there are many other benefits as well as negatives. You know, there's all these pros and cons to everything. But yeah, thank you so much, guys. Um, please, please, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Hi guys, I know it's the end of the video, but I've just um, realized that I've missed out a very, very important um point of this which is the rental income of the property so in deciding whether or not you qualify for a buy to let mortgage they look at the rental income or the potential rental income of the property in question thank you guys please don't forget to like comment and subscribe thank you bye